The war that Hamas terrorists started against Israel on October 7 has ripped the mask off the left. Now, you know, decades ago, I was giving speeches to Jewish groups and I was warning then, look, you think the next big threat will come from the right, but it won't. The left will be your enemy. Few wanted to believe it. I mean, Jewish intellectuals tended to be of the left themselves and they thought they were making alliances with the so-called oppressed, with academics, thought leaders. They were doing, you know, interfaith with Muslim leaders, etc. They didn't want to admit that they would be betrayed. But look now, I have never seen from the left such naked hatred of Israel and even Jews. And most of this hatred justified by lies and the left's perverted new ideology. That's important. That's the thing I saw coming. And what you've got now is often a pitiless hatred. I'll give you one shocking example. It's from an academic from Sydney University speaking openly of the October 7th slaughter of the Jews by Hamas, children even being burned alive, parents murdered in front of their children, a pregnant woman torn apart. Here he is. I'm not going to stand before you and shed tears over the settlers. No tears for the Jews, not from some on the left or maybe even many. Now, you may wonder where this comes from, this, this hatred of Israel, where you've got even in Washington, the woke capital of the United States, more than 100,000 people, not just Muslims at all, marching down with Israel. And this hatred of Jews as well, where even Jewish students in a very left-wing campus like Harvard get monstered by the left. But, you know, it should be no wonder that the left has turned on Israel. When you have a look, uh, Jews and Israel happen to tick every box for the left's favourite villains. Now, most obviously, the Jews of Israel are too white for the left because the left's identity politics today say, well, that says white is the colour of oppression. And the Jews of Israel are also too successful because the left's new Victim politics says the marginalised peoples like Palestinians, they're actually hero victims. They're never victims of their own toxic choices. You see, not to the left. And what's more, the Jews of Israel are also too rich. And as you know, the left still believes that Marxist lie, that riches are what you steal, not create. And the Jews now are even damned as colonialists. The West's ultimate sin, of course, is colonialism, according to the left catechism. The Palestinian people are an indigenous people. They are victims of colonialism. Now, never mind the truth that uh, Jews were, in fact, indigenous to Israel for many thousands of years, long before Islam was invented for a start. But history now, postmodernism, right? History now is what the left invents not records. You can just make it up. But one more bit of ideology does seal the left's case against the Jews. You've, if you notice how fiercely collectivist or tribal the left now is, how quick to dismiss personal responsibility. And you see it right now in this catastrophe we're facing in this war. Many on the left are excusing or relativizing this just barbaric savagery of the mass terrorists who run Gaza and on October 7 butchered 1,400 Jews, even mutilating parents in front of their children, can you believe it? Raping women, parading them before cheering crowds, executing them, beheading victims, burning babies alive. We're staff from Sydney University and we're from the group of Sydney Uni staff that support boycott, divestment and sanctions. And we're here out in support of justice for Palestine and freedom for Palestinians. And we're saying that resistance is justified. Resistance is justified. That resistance is justified? Is that resistance? In fact, that was something so profoundly evil that it actually breaks history, history's chain of cause and effect. 
right? This, this stands outside that. And that means this war with Hamas, it started on October 7. It didn't start in 1948 or whatever other date you choose. And it was started by Hamas. But not according to the tribal left, not include, according to Antonio Guterres, the United Nations idiotic secretary general. You know, as if treating the Hamas terrorists as if they're just sort of impersonal dominoes. You, you tip them over. History tips them over with a fat finger. and tup, 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 tup. They've got no moral decision-making of their own. No decision-making that we've got a damn. It is important to also recognize the attacks by Hamas did not happen in a vacuum. The Palestinian people have been subjected to 56 years of suffocating occupation. Oh, the one caused the other. No, it didn't. That barbarity is something... I don't know where it comes from, but not just from history. But to the left, this is one more strike against the Jews. Many on the left, cause, effect, they actually cause their own murder. How about that? Even when they're being slaughtered, it's the Jews' fault. The Australian Greens are the clearest example of this moral depravity of the left. And I don't even just mean the more extreme Greens, you know, like race-baiting Senator Maureen Faruqi wearing her Palestinian scarf to Parliament to rant at Israel. We bring the people's protest into Parliament. Free, free Palestine. I mean even its leader, Adam Bant, tweeting support for a rally, an anti-Israel rally, with a map demanding a free Palestine from the river to the sea with no Israel. Do you know, even worse is that people you might have thought were almost reasonable Greens. They seem reasonable. They're now falling for the ludicrous spin of Hamas, the terrorist group which runs Gaza. Take Senator David Shoebridge, the Greens defence spokesman, who last Thursday savaged Israel for bombing a Hamas military compound that Hamas had placed between a mosque, a clinic and a school in what Hamas still calls a refugee camp, even though it's now really just another concrete suburb of Gaza City. Now, Shoebridge accepted Hamas's figures for the dead. Upwards of 200 um, civilians, the majority women and children, were killed in order for the IDF to, 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 to kill one identified target, to identify and, and kill one targeted terrorist. Would anybody say that was a justifiable response in Tel Aviv? You wonder how blinded by ideology David Shoebridge must be to believe in such an idiotic scenario. Shoebridge won't believe the Israeli Defence Forces, which claims it killed not just Ibrahim Biari, who's commander of Hamas's Central Jabalia Battalion, but also killed approximately 50 of his terrorists. Now, all right, Shubrich doesn't want to believe that, but how can he possibly believe the Hamas version instead? I mean, you ask yourself, what are the odds, really, that one of Hamas's most senior terrorists in this war is sitting in wartime in one of Hamas's biggest terrorist bases surrounded by 200 civilians, most of them children and women. But not one fighter is there on this base, not one. I mean, seriously, seriously. Now, I cannot believe that a man thinking clearly, not clouded by prejudice, would believe that everyone except this terrorist boss in a terrorist base was actually a civilian. And most likely a child or a woman. And it stuns me that so many on the left, particularly journalists, still believe the wild claims, implausible scenarios and often inflated casualty figures of Hamas. It's like they seem to think that terrorists who happily burn whole families of Jews alive, who film themselves slaughtering kids at a music festival, they film themselves. They parade the bodies of Jewish women in the streets, dead women in the streets as crowds go, yay! That they do all this, but there is a certain line for them. God forbid they should tell a lie. Really? Oh, yes, yes, we murder babies, but we'd never tell a lie to a journalist. I mean, what is going through your mind to 
to think this, to believe that. And that is why I, I cannot rule out anti-Semitism. When I hear leftists, otherwise intelligent, most of them, repeat the propaganda of these lying Hamas butchers while sneering at the claims of Israel, democratic country, free press. For instance, the lie that you still hear, that Hamas uh, lie that uh, Green Senator Jordan Steele John immediately parroted that hundreds of Palestinian civilians were killed when those wicked Israelis committed abhorrent crime and bombed a hospital. When you can, in fact, plainly see that what was hit was not the hospital, but a small car park. And when all the evidence says that it was hit not by an Israeli bomb or missile, but with a misfiring Palestinian rocket. And, of course, when the death toll is now thought to be dozens at most, not hundreds, as Hamas claimed. So ask yourself, why this willful gullibility of the left, so many on the left, to the lies of Hamas? I repeat, it suggests anti-Semitism. That their default position, of course, the Jews are more likely to be the liars and the murderers. Hamas, their truth-telling victims. Just as the new ideology of the left would suggest as well.